Hello my loves and welcome back to my channel. Today I am taking you through a cozy vlog where I show you what I do in my day to day as a stay at home mom who is also trying to build a business with her podcast and with this channel. I usually have yoga flows, meditations, and talk videos on how to live your most aligning, present, and fulfilling life. But I thought it would be interesting to just see how it all fits into a day because I know I would be curious. So as I take you through my morning routine, I want you to remember that not every day looks like this. Not every day do I get to do all these things. And again, I try to keep it as realistic as possible. If I do it on a somewhat regular routine, I included it like rubbing the squash out on my face. It feels so stinking good, even though I broke it on accident or Arlo might have broken it. I'm not sure who, but I still use it because it feels so rejuvenating on my face. I also want to talk about the fact that it is winter and we have this natural inclination to slow down, rest, rejuvenate, go within just like nature is doing. And that is really what I've been allowing myself to do. You know, I do have my day-to-day -day responsibilities, but when I can, I have been resting. I've been filling my cup up as much as possible because it just feels right. It feels so intuitive to do in this season. So I start every morning with a stretch, pretty much every single morning if I get up in time. And that just feels so good for my body. And then that leads me right into a little meditation. And then today I had some extra time. So either I will work on the things that I'm working for, for my podcast or for my YouTube channel. But today I decided to journal and just sit and enjoy the peace and quiet a little bit. Again, like I said, each day looks different. But today I had the nudge to just sit and journal and sit in the quiet. It's so peaceful in the winter mornings, especially on a day like today when we had a snow outside. So I'll snuggle up with my journals. Yes, I have more than one journal because why not? <laughs> with my coffee and I just let myself get out whatever is on my heart and my mind in this moment. I also decided to use this time to get a little bit of reading and I didn't get very far, but I'm currently reading The Fifth Agreement. It is gonna go down as one of my favorite books. I love The Four Agreements and The Fifth Agreement is just as good. It's simple, it's quick to read, and so profound. Now, I've been putting elderberry syrup in pretty much anything that I think it will taste good in because I have heard and done my own research into the fact that it really helps with your immune system and fighting off viruses and cold and we've been sick for like weeks. Just whatever is going around that everyone has and I'm just over it. So I put it in my tea, I put it in my oatmeal along with peanut butter, some blackberries, honey, which is also good for your immunity and so many benefits and that is my breakfast today. I've been noticing in the winter too, I've been wanting to eat pretty much as soon as I get up, and oatmeal has just been so nourishing for my body in this season. I do allow Arlo to watch some TV. I just kind of have it on in the background. He's not always super interested in it because it allows me to get certain things done. I know screen time is a hot topic, but I think as long as you use it with intention and you don't overuse it, anything is a balance, right? We can go extremes on anything. And I know in this society, he's gonna have screens in his life. So might as well teach him how to use it intentionally. 
So I used that time to just kind of tidy up. And now you can see here, I'm starting to fold and stuff our reusable diapers. This is something that I was very nervous to try, but we've been using them since Arlo was born. Not the whole time, not when we were staying with friends and family because we didn't want to use their washer. Even though I don't think it's harmful for your washer, I'm definitely not an expert in this, but if you're curious, just look up some YouTube videos. I read a statistic that every single diaper that's been used is still in the landfills like it hasn't decayed and that just hurt my heart blew my mind so we use them most of the time and then at night or when we're traveling we'll use disposable diapers Every day looks different with a toddler, but today we have some friends coming over, so I changed into normal pants, made myself a smoothie with just kale, spinach, dates, peanut butter, protein powder, ice, and a little bit of ginger, again for the immunity, and that is one of my favorite snacks, even in the dead of winter. I'd be lying if learning how to entertain a toddler hasn't been a struggle. I mean, with each phase, you're just learning new things. And we do the randomest things someday. Like, what are we even doing here? A lot of times, it turns into me doing yoga randomly in a sunbeam because it feels good. And it's funny, sometimes Arlo will join me. But he's just being Arlo. I'm doing my thing. And we just do our best to entertain each other. I've been trying to plan out our weeks a little bit more. I mean, not plan too much because I want to be flexible but have some engagements during the week like today we had some friends over on Wednesdays we go to the library when it's warmer out we will go to parks even when it warms up a little bit we're going to start going for walks again I mean I think it's just important to remember as you're learning to be a stay-at-home parent to just be like compassionate and patient with yourself yes I allow Arlo to play in the bathtub because he loves it and the house is a disaster sometimes and that's okay we're all learning every day is different we're constantly flowing with life and it's beautiful and messy all at the same time Hello, hello. I hope you've been enjoying today's vlog so far. I've been wanting to vlog since we've been in this house, which has been like a month and a half, but it just hasn't flowed. Well, I guess I've done a few videos here and there, but not a specific vlog. Just kind of peeking into my life, showing you how things are going, kind of catching up because a lot has been happening. And I just know a lot of people out there can probably relate to some of the things I've been going through. So um, let's just sit and chat for a second. I got Arlo down for a nap. I poured myself an adrenal cocktail. If you haven't heard of these on TikTok yet. Actually, I think I heard of them from a YouTube video first. It doesn't really matter. They're kind of viral now, but it's basically just coconut water and orange juice. It's supposed to really replenish your adrenals you be less stressed. I think you can put salt in them too, or you're supposed to put salt in them. I didn't today. And there's lots of variations of this drink. Neither here nor there. But if you want to grab a drink and just sit down with me for a second. So I used to get so much anxiety once Arlo napped of like, what do I do with this time? If you're a parent or specifically if you're a stay at home parent, even if you're just a busy person, sometimes we can get so much anxiety when we finally get free time of like, what do I do with this time? And you have so many things that you feel like you should be doing. You just kind of freeze up. And I don't know if anyone else is like me in the fact that I feel like I need to be in the mood to do certain things. That's how I like to live my life. I like 
very, very flowy and be in the right mood to do things. So then that can stress me out because I'm like, I'm not in the mood to record a podcast or I'm not giving my best energy to a YouTube video. All just silly mind stories, but that is something I've definitely been working through. And something that's really helped me is that when I put Arlo down, I don't just jump right into my to-do list. Like today I sat down with a YouTube video I've been wanting to watch or sometimes I read or meditate or go take a nap, whatever it may be, and just kind of like fill up my bucket first, do the fun things first, and then do my other tasks, which the irony of it is, is this is fun too. My podcast is also fun, but we just put such like mental pressure, unnecessary pressure on these things sometimes, which makes them not fun. And that's one of my intentions for 2024 is just have fun and see where things flow. So I've talked about these things a lot on my podcast. So go and check that out if you haven't already. But adjusting to being a full-time stay-at-home mom has been very interesting. And what is also interesting is I've been doing it since June. June is when I quit my job. And I've been Arlo's like main caretaker because Stephen was either working on the RV or, you know, doing other stuff for the house or working, you know, he has a full-time job. But it wasn't until this like last month that it like hit me hard, which I find so interesting. It wasn't until we moved into our house that I was like, I'm struggling with this. And um, those of you who have transitioned into that role or really just had any huge transition into your life, I feel like you can relate to this. We have so much resistance to certain titles sometimes like I had so much resistance to the title of being a stay-at-home mom because I was like I'm not just doing that I mean that on its own is a full-time job more than a full-time job you're doing it all the time right being a mom but I was like I also have my podcast and my business and my youtube channel like I'm working on things and I'm trying so hard to get those things flowing and again just putting unnecessary pressure on all of it and I felt like I was doing nothing well and it was a dark time there for a while, which makes sense because we're in deep winter here in the Midwest. I hope I've shown some beautiful footage. It's actually gorgeous outside. I'm looking at it right now. There's just like a little layer of snow on everything. And we haven't experienced real winter in like seven years because we've been living in Phoenix, Arizona, where it shines in the winter. So I just feel so connected to the seasons now that I'm like, I hate to say truly experiencing them because that's my perception of true seasons. It's what I grew up with, right? It's having snow in the winter, but it's different everywhere in the world. But I just feel like deeply connected to the seasons again, now that I'm seeing such contrast between summer, fall, winter, spring. And this past week, I just let myself rest. Like when Arlo nap, you know, they always say, when your baby naps, you should nap. <laughs> I've seen so many memes of like, yeah, but I've got all these things to do. Last week, I took that advice and I didn't necessarily nap. One day I did, but I would just read when he was napping or watch some shows that I've been wanting to watch for a while or just do something that I wanted to do. Plus, we were in sick on top of that, which I feel like we get sick in the winter because we're not resting. We feel this natural need to hibernate and rest and go within in the winter just like nature is doing, just like the trees are doing, and we don't listen to it, and that's when we get sick. So many theories and all that, but I took last week off. I didn't post any videos. I did end up recording a podcast just because I always have things in my heart to share, but it felt so good, and I so needed it. So this is me reminding you in whatever capacity that you can, maybe you can say no to some things. Maybe you can push some things off until next week but try to incorporate some rest when you can. And here's the tricky part, is resting and not feeling bad about it, because that's not restful if you're resting and just feeling guilty the whole time. That's not restful at all. Rest and truly just like soak it up like a sponge. Just be there in that moment. Remind yourself that there's nothing else to do besides resting. That also brings me to another update, and I can tell them in my body right now that I've started teaching full-time yoga classes here in the local area. I've done two already, so I'm doing every Monday night and then two Sundays a month for now. That may change, and it has been so much fun to teach live yoga classes, which I've kind of done before for like friends and family. I did my first yoga class ever on a bachelorette party for my friend. 
I do yoga with Steven all the time and I'm like his instructor, I guess you could say. And I've done other classes here and there, but to do it like, I guess, legitimately in a yoga studio with people that are paying to be there and just like offering that energy exchange has been so good for my soul. Like I so needed that. And that opportunity just flowed into my life. Like I got the ping one day to Google Jobs. At Google Jobs, I applied. I went and met the lady. You know, we just connected right off the bat. And she was like, yeah, you, you got the job. Like, let me know what days you're available. And I was like, are you sure? I was like, this is awesome. I think it helped having the YouTube channel too, where you can like see me in yoga teacher mode and get a feel for that. But that has been so good for my soul. So my plan for today while Carlo is napping is to continue drinking my adrenal cocktail and just enjoying my ambiance of my new office as you can see behind me. I still have a lot of work to do, not only in the office, but the house in general, just like things to put together, but I'm really not putting pressure on myself. And I tell Steven all the time, like we don't have to have the house put together right away. Like some people, it takes years and I don't want to rush it either. So we're really taking our time hanging things up. We haven't really hung up anything besides a few things. I always feel so permanent, right? But I do have some beautiful pieces I want to hang up in here and I'm just loving the vibe in my office. I'm loving this window. It faces the sun, which is so rejuvenating to me. So I'm going to continue taking you through my day and I'm going to use this time while Arlo is napping to research a topic for the podcast. If you've been listening, we've been diving into different spirituality concepts and how they connect to science, which has been so fun for me. Again, I said my intention for 2024 is to follow what feels fun and that feels fun for me. My heart will always be a science teacher. That's what I started in and it just makes me so happy. So this week we are researching brain states and I'm going to connect that to like meditation and connecting with your internal guidance and how that all fits in and how we can intentionally get into those brain states to serve us in living our most aligned life. So I'm going to research that. If I have time, I'm going to record some of it. If not, I will record that tomorrow and then just like let the day continue to flow on and not put too much pressure on myself to get all the things done when Arlo is snapping. But I will say, hack out there to any parents listening. Like a month ago, we would only give Arlo a bottle in the morning and at night. I don't know, I just read that somewhere, like not to give him too much milk. And also, I try not to eat that much dairy, so I was like, oh, I don't want him to have that much. I don't know, I'm sure a lot of people out there can have lots of opinions on this. But we started giving him a bottle before his nap, and he naps so much longer now, like two and a half hours. So game changer. I'm like, why didn't we do this before? It's just crazy. Always learning as a parent, but continue to come along with me as I head through the rest of my day, do some podcast stuff, and we'll see where the rest of the day flows. finishing up my research on these brainwave states and it is so fascinating. I'm so excited for you guys to hear this episode. So subscribe to the podcast if you're interested. And really why I'm diving into science and spirituality is because when we hear science to back up maybe a spiritual concept that we've heard about, it just gives our brain and our mind permission to believe it fully. Like it's just that little kick in the you know what that we need to be like okay this is the real deal like this is gonna help me live more aligned fulfilling and present life so i will link that episode once it's up but this video is going to come out first but go and subscribe to the podcast if you're interested in those conversations So I just left Target and I'm just reflecting back on my relationship with Target. I feel like Target used to get so much more of my money <laughs> back in the day. Like when I first moved to Arizona and even before then I went all the time, but especially when I moved to Arizona, I would go to Target all the time when I was feeling sad, especially on Sundays and I would just like 
shop to avoid my feelings or to help me feel better. <laughs> Even though I loved being there, it was really just that first year when I was there by myself and still adjusting and all that. But I went today because I love their diapers. They have good diapers for a good price. Even though we do the cloth diapers, we still do the other diapers at night and when we travel and stuff like that. And I love these bars that they have there. It's really hard to find like good, they're not even protein bars, just like granola bars that you can take on the go. And these are just like four ingredients. But they're so freaking good. So I'm gonna insert a clip or a video somewhere. I wasn't gonna pass up an opportunity to go to Target by myself. That never happens. Um, so when Steven said he didn't wanna go and he'd watch Arlo, I was like, you got it. I will go and get things. And I picked up a few things that I needed as well. But it's just a reminder that like, there's other ways to feel your feels than spending money. And I'm definitely no expert in this, but it's just something we talk about. About. on the podcast a lot how we can avoid our feelings in a lot of different ways and sometimes that's shopping or going to target and if it does feel fun and good to go to target do it just do it with awareness and intention of what you're doing so just that little tidbit and probably way deeper reflection on target than you maybe were wanting <laughs> I just feel like my perspective and mindset around money and spending money has changed so much. A large part of that is due to Steven. Just his mindset's really rubbed on, on me that like we don't need a lot of stuff to be happy. And then through our travels and through van life and doing RV life, that's really reinforced that I don't need stuff to be happy. Like, of course, I want to furnish our house and I want our house to look nice, but we don't need like the extra stuff and it's just so tempting sometimes that you think you need this or that especially for the different seasons like I saw a bunch of cute Valentine's Day stuff but you don't need a lot to be happy so just things to remember as you're shopping not only in Target but anywhere. Something that's really worked well for Stephen and I is we alternate every night who puts Arlo to bed and who gets up with him. He usually only gets up one time during the night because he needs his passy, but that just really helps mix things up and then we each get time putting him to bed. And then after that, or right before, depending on if I'm putting him to bed or not, I'll clean up a little bit because there's nothing better than waking up the next morning to a clean kitchen where all the dishes are clean and everything is put away. So I do my best to create a beautiful working space for myself in the morning because my mornings are so sacred to me. Again, you can see toys are everywhere. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like insanity picking them up every day, but it's just, is what it is. This is the season of life we're in and I try to embrace it as much as I can. So my main chunks of time to get work done are in the morning while Arlo naps or at night after he goes to bed. And I don't work every single time at these times. Like remember in the morning, I didn't get any work done. I used it to fill up my own cup. But tonight I did want to record this podcast episode because I just researched it. It was fresh in my mind and it felt good to do that. But some nights I just relax and I read a book or I watch a show. And then I always end my night by stretching a little bit because my body loves it so much. I try to let it just intuitively move me through a different poses. And then one thing I've been incorporating every single night is putting my feet up the wall. Just Google the benefits of this. Just doing it for a few minutes is so good. We rarely have our feet above our heart. So it is a little after 9.30. I'm finally getting in bed after a full day of doing all the things that I love. I'm so grateful that I get to do all of these things and that I have the time and space, even though I do struggle sometimes, like I said, after a full day like today, my, my heart is so full, but I will say my mind is kind of an overload after that podcast episode with so much information on brain states, but it was so interesting. So go and check it out if you're interested. But now I'm going to snuggle up and read the next book in A Court of Thorns and Roses. I'm on A Court of Wings and Ruin. I had to take a break after the second one, even though it ended on such an intense note. It was so good just because I had some other book obligations, a library book I had to finish, and a book club I'm in. 
but it feels really good to go back to this one. So I'm gonna read a little bit of this and then go to bed, but thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you found this interesting. If you did, please let me know in the comments. Please like this video, share any of the things that you're going through in this winter season or ways that you are living your own life in alignment. And I'm sending you all so much love, all the highest vibes, and I will see you in the next video.